Well. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> I've always liked it just because I enjoyed the comics when I was a kid. And uh, the things I really enjoyed the best were, ironically enough, the Carl Barks material that I didn't even know was done by him back when I was originally reading it back in the 60s. And uh, ever since then, it's just been something I've been a part of. I you know, can't say much more than that. My favorite. Well, the sentimental favorite is really Gyro Gearless for me. Uh, I've always been fascinated with the technological side of things, and Gyro Gearless was the epitome of that uh, for his era, and uh, the, in the consummate inventor who came up with anything. It didn't matter what it was, he could invent it. And, uh, the, even the character's very attitude about it was like, to him, it wasn't a big deal. He just did it, and that was what he did with his life. So that's always been my favorite. Yeah. He was he was MacGyver long before there was MacGyver, in a sense. <laughs> no, I can't say as I do. I've, uh... Sorry. No, no, no kibitzing from the camera crew there on the answers to the questions. <laughs> no, I've uh, I've never had a specific one. Uh, strangely enough, the only s Bark story that I ever liked a lot that had a lot to do with technology was Island in the Sky, which was an Uncle Scrooge adventure that had nothing to do with Gyro Gearloose. But it was, for some reason, he just put Duckburg about 100 years in the future and had uh, Scrooge concerned about which asteroid to uh, put his money on. And it was just a sudden leap of uh, concept that, uh, you know, by the next issue he'd abandoned and was, went on with everything according to what it was like in 1950. And, uh, you know, that was one that had stuck in my mind. I've, I've always just put all the Gyro Gearloose stories together in my mind. No particular thing has ever stood out. That's all I got to say on those matters, anyway. Talk away on whatever matters you would like. Oh, shit. Is there anything else you want to add? You're going to be editing this for the most part, right? Well, Blizzard is okay. It's very much like what nobody really ever thinks a comic book company is like. Just a few uh, art tables, a uh, typesetter, and uh, everything that most uh, is most exciting to the fans is elsewhere. You know, we do the grunt work that makes things happen. It's an environment that's changing constantly. It never, never really stays the same from one month to the next. And, uh, Sometimes we're, we're doing Disney, and sometimes we're doing lithographs, and sometimes we're doing something that has nothing to do with any of that. We just never know from one day to the next, so one thing's for sure, we're, we're constantly on the jump around here. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're located in a very nice town in Arizona, away from a lot of the heat and the hubbub of a big city. It's kind of nice to be kind of tucked away in there, you know, a chance to do business without getting a whole lot of attention from the community.